hybrid air vehicles, we are developing Airlander to be right at the forefront of the changes that we need to see to make aviation more sustainable. And so what we're doing is important for the markets and the people that will be getting on board the aircraft for the connections that we can make, for the benefits that we can bring using Airlander. But I think it's also important for what, what we're doing signals for the way that the aerospace industry is changing. Uh, we've got this big decarbonisation challenge ahead of us um, and ac addressing that challenge is going to require us to think differently. So we're rethinking the skies. We're looking for the partners to come alongside us who can help us rethink the skies and the tools that help us do it efficiently and the pathways to get this amazing aeroplane um, into its customers so passengers can get on board, fly to their destinations with 90% less emissions as quickly as possible. Yeah, I think it's quite an exciting time, actually, in aviation to start on that path of decarbonation. And whether or not we are going to see a fixed wing hydrogen powered aircraft flying anytime soon, I guess what you're doing here at Hybrid Air Vehicle is really leading the way to that decarbonation. So we're really excited to be working alongside with you guys. That, that's right. And it's, um, it's a set of stepping stones that the whole industry needs. And we've got a set of stepping stones here as well. Um, the fact that with current generation technologies, things that we've already prototyped and flown, we can get into flight with something that for all of its uses will have at least a 75% reduction in emissions for, for any use. And in many of its uses will be 90% emissions reduction right from the start. Um, that's exciting in itself, but it also signposts the way to the iterations that we're taking forward from there, hydrogen aviation, hydrogen fuels, fuel cells, electric motors. Um, and so each of those steps needs to be supported by the tools um, and the digital infrastructure that allows those, uh, those products to be developed quickly, implemented and in service. So um, it's going to be great to be working together through each of those iterations. And I think the, some of the things that are in front of us are uh, significant steps, whether it's developing the manufacturing techniques, the manufacturing plant to do things in, all these things are significant steps where modeling reduces your um, the, the development path for that and gets you to be more efficient more quickly. And being able to help a designer know how his, his job today is impacting the sustainability of a part way downstream, so whether it's being, how something is being operated or maintained or even disposed of, but is understanding that early Having a tool that allows you to understand that will be revolutionary, I think. I'm guessing also the, the, the tool itself is scalable. So bringing on your suppliers, your partners, looking at infrastructures, whether you're growing globally as well as an organization, and the tool set can really allow you to, to grow as, as you do and, and the requirements to deliver on your demands for, for your pre-orders and everything else. Um, what's important with the tool set is, is allowing the customer to really look at the requirements from the requirements and build and land the full project plan for the scope of these aircrafts. Along with that, we're going through the design, the simulation of these, and then right from your E-bomb into your M-bomb for your manufacturing to, to, to really scale up. So it's very important to have a tool set that can really support the journey, but at, at a quick pace, the, the hybrid air vehicles are wanting to launch these as soon as they can. And the, the, the tool set's allowing them to actually go end to end with actually doing these capabilities. Again, some of the some of the things that are in front of us, um, if we just utilize our existing experience, we'll end up not jumping to the most efficient, effective solution. So taking that experience, feeding that into a virtual twin, allowing us to experience this thing, whatever it is in the future, and help us jump to a more efficient space quickly is going to last the power for us. Uh, I, I think that's a great image you're putting there. Um, the virtual twin is actually a window toward the future and to see what is the impact of what you are designing into the future, whether it's not only for the design, but for the manufacturing and as well for the operation or the more sustainable operations, uh, including the, the full life cycle. Um, but I guess it's also some technology or some solutions that are exciting for the engineers and for the younger generation that will come on board on your, your project, right? Yeah, and I, and I think all of that's true. I think I'm particularly interested in how 
um, virtual twin can help explore the in-service impacts and the in-service choices that operators might make. But all of this is done in the context of something that's so different to what, uh, what's been done elsewhere in aviation that um, exploring those differences, understanding those differences early um, will really help us ensure that uh, what's in service performs to its optimum and performs sustainably. Yeah, and I think it's also an ecosystem uh, discussion, whether you are going to put that virtual twin of your aircraft in light of discussions with authorities for certification, for example, uh, with the different vertiports or airports you are going to operate with. And that's going to be really a connections between different virtual twins that are going to be interesting to see how that concept will unfold. Yeah, there's certainly a whole ecosystem to be uh, to be built here across, as you say, airports, operators, training organizations, maintenance organizations, and being able to model that and understand that ecosystem early, very important. I think you touched there on a, a people element. I think that's important. You know, we, we need, as an industry need to attract the best people. We, and we certainly do as a company want to attract the best people. And the world's changing fast and the aerospace industry has been similar for a long time. So if we're not careful, the aerospace industry will get left behind and won't attract those people. So tools that let people see that we can be creative, we can be innovative, we can be sustainable. Those are all things that are gonna help us bring the right people in and say broadly to the industry and <laughs> very definitely we need to be in our company. Yeah. <laughs>I think what we're going to try and do is we're trying to take a, a an MBSE approach, a model-based systems engineering approach here, trying to bring some of the new technologies, really doing an end-to-end -end process, bringing in augmentative reality, virtual reality, giving a customer experience within these aircrafts. So we're trying to bring in all the latest technology of what we know to date with some traditional aircrafts, but we're actually bringing some new approaches to the forefront of really trying to upscale what hybrid are trying to offer as part of their offering. So we're like it, looking to bring in all of these different types of methods and processes to, to, to introduce along with the, the journey of building these aircrafts. And what do you think are the opportunities for bringing technologies like generative AI into that mix? I think it's very interesting. It, we can use it for, for a multitude of different purposes. So, so the build of the aircraft, um, it can actually, we've seen evidence that it's actually improving the build of the aircraft. So would we use in virtual reality? We're actually getting better customer experiences beforehand to actually uh, change the design or change the layout of how things can actually look and feel. So the customers are actually seeing the product before actually physically receiving the product. So it's allowing design changes at the forefront of the technology before you, you're actually making the inroad. So bringing some of this technology in is, is allowing us to work with companies like yourself to really, really improve some of the aspects of what we're trying to achieve or what you are trying to achieve for your customers to deliver. I'm looking forward to seeing some of those options that we might uh, that, that we might leverage use to leverage space like this. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think in terms to your point in terms of uh, generative AI. I mean, obviously, we've been doing generative design for quite a number of years, more than twenty years now. Either at the scale of the product, of course, to have these uh, shaped, um, solved on stress or on CFD to have that three D printing, beautiful. Uh, biological shapes. Uh, so we've been doing that for quite a long time. But I think what's changing with AI is the fact that we are we can do that now at scale. At scale for primary design, we are at a stage now where we can do parametric design at the level of the preliminary design for an aircraft. Okay. It can be almost automatically generated provided that you already have that data in the house, that you've got already some of the systems design, some of the architectural design that you can feed the AI engine with. Uh, so I think our role at Dassault System is also to be able to provide you not only the nice artificial intelligence tools to work on your data patrimony, but as well to kind of give you the opportunity to keep that IP for you and making sure that the AI tool is reserved to the OEM that it's working on. I think also the longevity of all of this is, is we're talking about building of the aircraft, the manufacturing of the aircraft. We then look into servicing. And again, some of the augmentative reality is, is allowing um, people around the world for you to share your actual work instructions or some of the servicing through VR technology within built in directly from your DMU of how these things could be serviced in, in operations as well. So a lot of that technology we can look to bring in as part of this journey as well. 
Uh, yeah, we are delighted to have reached the point where we've submitted the type certificate application for Airlander 10. Um, we all know it's a big milestone in the life of any aircraft, and this is the world's first hybrid aircraft. So it'll be the first application for anything like this um, around the world. It marks the start of a journey, um, the end of one phase, um, lots of development to get us to this point, but the start of that journey now that's so relevant to the work that we're doing together um, in terms of now moving through to the point of certifying that aircraft for production and getting deliveries at scale going for this new technology. Yeah, and I guess that means a lot of sweat from the engineering team, right? I think, I think, well, I think they're more excited. So if you like, they've been preparing for interaction with the regulator. So regulators, so it's our job to make the aircraft safe. Um, it's the regulator's job to make sure that we do the right job to make it safe. Um, so we've spent a lot of time preparing for that. They're really looking forward to that challenge that the regulator will bring. And I think the regulator is looking forward to such an exciting and large project. I mean, this is a, the first big cert certification program that the CAA will have led for whatever it is, nearly 40 years. So what do you expect from us with regard to that certification process and how can we help you deliver on that objective? So I think what we need to do is to grow into all the things that the, the 3D experience can offer in a, a controlled way that both works with our engineering team as it grows and works with the regulator as their understanding of how to do that certification grows. And as long as we um, do that in the right steps, then we won't take a step too far, and but we'll have taken uh, all the possible um, sort of ability out of the system to shorten that certification process. So um, TriMec is um, traditionally worked with um, the supply chain, typically within Airbus or some, some of the uh, contracts from BAA from the, the military side of things. What's very exciting for us, certainly here in the United Kingdom and England, is we're seeing an innovative company such as hybrid air vehicles. What we're trying to do is we're not just trying to supply software and services for this, we're, we're really building on partnerships. Um, you're on now our second partnership joint with DASO Systems. We're really trying to bring the forefront of the technology, not just supplying it, but actually becoming part of the core team within HAV to actually enhance what we can uh, achieve on the offerings. So with some of our people who have got industry experience along with the software, hopefully we, we will deliver and we will drive that forward to, to, to the timescales that uh, hybrid air vehicles really need to, to meet type certification and then flying in the skies. I think from our perspective, it's, it's really helpful having, having you in the, in the, if you like, excuse me, describe it as in the middle, um, but as a, as a partner, they're helping both us understand how to get the best out of the tool, helping Dasso understand our pressures and, under, and what speed we can assimilate different parts and helping that growth and heading towards the, the most efficient application of, of our resources over the time to make that certification process as quickly as quick as possible. So try and make your other glue between the technology <laughs> and right. the challenges of the yeah. business. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, we are, we are. It's it's, it's very uh, it's very challenging. Um, we have a lot of experience, but what's refreshing is that um, hybrid air vehicles are coming with a lot of legacy knowledge, but actually we're bringing that legacy knowledge along with what we're offering from a partner perspective of what is new, what is the latest, how can we move things quicker how can we get get things um, done with your team? And like you say, bring our experiences to what you already know, but actually some of the stuff which is coming along in the future to really enhance on that. And that really fits the way we think about partnerships as well. I mean, we're bringing a new type of product to the market. This is different to the way we design aircraft for other parts of the aerospace world. And we're all about efficiency in design and we're all about efficiency in the time taken to get this uh, to get this product to market. So partnerships really are the, the sort of the glue that allows 
um, that that efficiency to be uh, to be developed in something that is so new and so different to to what we're all used to, perhaps from the bits of industry that uh, we've worked on before. Absolutely. I, I, again, we we sort of thank you for, for for allowing us to be part of that journey with you. Uh, we're very excited to be on board and um, can't wait to see these these aircrafts flying in the sky and being part of the call cool team with you guys that that helped develop that. This is um, such an exciting part of our program because this is the point where we take technology and we scale it. So we've talked about type certification of Airlander 10. That's really the start of our journey. Um, 10 years from now, we expect to have a fleet of Airlander 10 in service around, around the world. We also expect to have Airlander 50 coming off the production line. So that's 50 tons of lift on an aeroplane that can go and land on water, on marsh, on ice, on sand, any part of the world. Um, so this is the start of what we think of as a new category in the transport world that we have around us. So within the next 10 years, I can expect to be on a cruise at 10,000 feet level, right? Uh, you certainly can. I mean, um, our customers for Airlander 10 include people, companies doing exactly that. So if you want to go to Greenland and cruise around the Arctic, um, Grand Espas um, will be taking you there. If you want to fly from place to place in Spain, Air Nostrum will be taking you there, and there'll be many, many other opportunities around the world. It's going to be um, totally different, better experience for the air passenger, um, and a lower impact experience for the world. Sustainable travel. Sustainable travel. To that. Mm. Yes, travel without guilt. I think that was a phrase you can hear. Bringing the manufacture of any technology to life is, is an amazing step. But doing that here in the UK, scaling up in a part of the, world, part of the country um, that's got great industrial heritage in, North, in South Yorkshire, so well connected to the rest of the UK, um, and with so many skills and supply, good supply chain participants uh, there, it's a brilliant place for us to, to build from. But what I'm really passionate and really excited about is this gives us an opportunity for the next generation of engineers, mechanics, technicians, maintainers, trainers in the UK to be part of the aerospace industry um, and, and to do that with an aircraft of the future. Um, it's a phenomenally exciting moment for us, actually. Yeah, so we were talking earlier and it, I mean, I'm, I'm a cl classic. I was born almost flying paper airplanes playing with airplanes from a little tiny boy because I saw airplanes and saw people making airplanes. Um, it's disappointing temporarily that the UK isn't doing very much of that at the whole aircraft level um, and bringing that back individually is quite a powerful goal. And what we find in, in Tom talked a bit about South Yorkshire and the, the area there. What we find when we go to South Yorkshire is an unbelievable passion for that area. Yeah, they, they, have, um, they really, really want their children to have great jobs in South Yorkshire. Um, and what's infectious for us is that they have that same passion. It's a slightly different passion. They want people to stay in South Yorkshire. And they, but they, the, the two... But we, but we were the children that had yes. the passion to do these jobs in the UK. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very nice, uh, it's a very nice feeling to be bringing that to life here. I think it's also very important for, for us as, as partners, suppliers, that we're part of that with you guys. It's, it's, it's fantastic for us to get away from some of the traditional aircraft programs and come and join something so new, so innovative. Um, and being part of that journey and again it allows us as a business to support you but secondly also bring on the next lot of engineers within our team to to upskill with your team at the same time so it's very 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 exciting to be part of that that's good to hear. I mean, i've got to say it's uh the scale of what we're doing here i mean sometimes it catches us you know we've we've uh, been treated to some of the early imagery of what the production side is going to look at and even among the team here we've put those images up and just gone wow okay yeah that is uh, that's what we're bringing to life here that's a big powerful program and an inspirational program for um, for anybody that's involved in it certainly an ambitious program making great britain great again yes. for flying <laughs> 
C certainly uh, taking forward the proud heritage of the <laughs> British aerospace industry, that's for sure. With our European partners. <laughs> <laughs> yes.